Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and welcome to this new tutorial of Softimage Ice. Um, right, so we're gonna um, continue where we left off in the last tutorial and we're gonna address some of the issues that we are having with this um, with this system. Um, basically the problem that we have is that you see that if we move the null around everything works but if we move the sphere around the system gets broken, right? And this very quickly uh, brings us to kind of one of the big issues of Softimage Eyes. It's something that you have to understand uh, when you're working with Eyes that uh, how the local um, coordinate system of points work, uh, the local and global coordinates, right? So right now, this position of points, they are local to the matrix of the object. The matrix of the object would be um, the central axis. Uh, or the axis of the optic where the orientation position and scale uh, lives, right? So we will actually uh, get that information and what we need to do is a calculation that takes in consideration the matrix of the object in order to uh, not make it that, it's on, that it only works when it's kind of sitting in zero, right? So that we can move the object around and, and, and our calculation would still uh, maintain its properties, right? So this is going to be a bit more advanced, but uh, everything that we're going to see in this tutorial is going to be further explained uh, in vector math tutorials or matrix tutorials um, further along in the series. But it's just, if you're having trouble with, with some of these components, uh, I want you to be aware of uh, how to deal with this, right? Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just um, replace this distance node by uh, subtraction of vectors, right? So the subtraction of vectors will allow us to calculate the vector between um, uh, and we're going to also get the length right so it's the same thing we're calculating the, 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 the a vector from the point to the null right um, but uh, and also the length of the vector so we're kind of getting the same thing that the distance but we're, we're getting this vector that is important the problem here is that we're kind of calculating the the position of the point in on itself we are not considering um, the matrix of the object so we need to get that right so let's we'll get matrix sorry get data <laughs> And the data that we're going to collect is from the sphere. Uh, if you go into kinematics, um, this global transform, if you open it, you'll see that it has position, orientation, and scale. We will pick the whole global transform. And this is the matrix of the object. You see that it has a blue color. So we're going to multiply um, the vector, the position of the points, by the matrix of the object. Right, so this will actually give us a position that it's relative to the global coordinates. Right, we're going to use this guy here. So you see, everything stays the same, and we're still having the same problem. Right, um, so basically, what we need to do now is that this abstraction node is actually taking in consideration that information. We need to add that to the position of the point. So, let's I'm going to copy paste the position of the points and look at add function and what I'm going to do is add that subtraction with the position of the points right and that's going to be the new data that we're going to assign to the points so what are we doing here we are assigning to the position the, the same position that they have plus the new vector between these guys and the null and that vector that subtraction vector is taking in consideration the location of the the object right so let's see if this time around you see that this time we're kind of just moving around the sphere and that calculation happens properly still um, let's move now the null you see that if I move the null it works if we are moving the sphere it works right so everything seems to be working okay right now so 
uh, that's the very first thing. Um, it's a little bit of a headache at the beginning of just working with that, just understanding how this works. But then when you start realizing that everything kind of has the same logic, um, things start falling into place somehow. Um, so let's, we have quite a network already. It's not that huge, but like the one of the good things of Softimage Eyes is that you can just basically um, pre-compile if you're familiar with um, after effects you have pre-composed you can basically package this series of components into one component and name it and save it right so for instance what we're gonna do is just that we're gonna pick these guys everything and we're gonna go to compound create compound and you see that we created this compound here and we can just go with this E go inside it and navigate back with this arrow here so that's well we left some point position flying around there we go um, so let's see some of the properties of this we could see compound compound properties and we will call this like my first Um, and we're going to put in a category of um, uh, my custom nodes, right? Author, let's say, Jamison. So we can say the color and everything. So for now, we're going to just leave it like that. So my first compound. Um, and we could basically also say um, export the compound, right? So let's export it to my first compound, right? That could be the name of it, right? So you see that it took a little while, but um, Softimage was thinking a little bit there. And we could search for my first compound now, and my first compound is here. So I can just actually bring another one. And you see that it contains all the information that we've been using, right? So that's pretty interesting. So the thing we're going to do right now is just the problem is that we would like to have some functionality. So if we double click here, you see that there's it's very difficult to control just going in, like changing this value here. So, for instance, this slider might be something that we want to just allow someone else to use, right? So what we're going to do just now is, um, is take this slider here and we're going to just plug it to this side here, right? And by this arrow, we will actually have here and we're going to say a radius or distance of influence. Right, so you see that we are exposing one of the variables now, this one. And if we go outside, you see that we have distance of influence. And when we click, we can actually control the compound from the outside, right? So that's pretty good. The other thing that it's kind of interesting for these nodes uh, to work with is the fact that you in in different scenes you for instance you, you might you're relying right now on the object called null right and and the null has this object but what if you have a scene that has another null and you basically want to plug that object to your compound right you would have to go again inside here and say null kinematic global position etc so what we're going to do is just break this node uh into we're going to say get data so we're gonna say here first of all we're gonna distract the null here so we're gonna give the name to the source sorry to them to this node here so we have the null we have get data and here we're gonna say um, explore and you see that we are inside the null already what we're looking for is the kinematic global position, the position of the null, right? 
so exactly what we had before but let's just plug this one in so what we're gonna do now is just um, expose the name of the object as an external input right so you see that the name of the object that you're working with and we're gonna cut the null value now and take it outside and connect it here so basically this node requires any null you need to provide a null for it to work and it will have its own radius of influence right so that's a tool that we could actually use um, quite conveniently uh, and it's very flexible still for us to to manipulate if there's anything else in here that we could actually um, want to expose or give more flexibility we could keep in increasing this these uh, parameters that are exposed to be controlled from the outside of the tool right so we're gonna save this guy just again because we okay yes uh, there we go so now um, again we could just look for it just to make sure and you see that now my node uh, it's a custom node that we have prepared to just uh, alter the geometry of a sphere via the position of the node um, so that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you guys soon